before we get started, I just wanted to show you a preview of what you'll get right when you finish. You'll get this pearl material with a bubble slider and a imperfection slider that we can slide up and we get service imperfections and we can also change the scale of it manually and stuff like that. Anyways, just thought I'd show you that before we get started. Without further ado, let's get into it. So to get started, you just want to set up your scene. I'm assuming you already have your model. So I've just got a sphere here. Pointed my camera at it for the lighting. I'm going to be going into cycles and I've got scene world unchecked and I'm using the built-in force for 3D lighting. Then if you head over here to the shading tab, I just have my 3D viewport and my node editor with the same lighting settings here. So now to get started, we'll select our sphere and then press new. We're going to call this Pearl. And then we'll zoom out here until we find our nodes. Here they are. And then we're going to start off by adding a little bit of bump to it. It's going to be obviously very smooth, but just a little bit of detail that we can play with later. So we're going to shift A and add a Voronoi texture through the search bar. Then we're going to go to Edit Preferences and make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So just go to Add-ons and search up Node Wrangler and check the box here. Then with this guy selected, press Control and T. That's going to give us our mapping and texture coordinate. Then we're going to take our object here and move it into the vector. Then if we control shift and left click, we can preview the distance coming out of this guy. For this, we're going to be using the color. So if we control shift left click one more time, we can preview the color here. We, this is obviously way too big. So we're going to move this scale all the way up to a 50 like this. And then just to visualize what's happening in the black and white data for our height, I'm going to hit shift A and I'll add a math node. And then I'm going to switch both of these values here to zero. And then go ahead and check clamp right here. And if we put this right here, we are now previewing our math node and we can see the sort of black and white data for our height here. And I'm just gonna minimize this guy. Then I'm gonna select both the Voronoi and our add node here and press Control, Shift, and D, which will duplicate it and keep our vector. Then I'll Control, Shift, left click this math node to preview. I'm gonna switch the scale to a 75 here. So now we have some variation. We have the scale at 50 and the scale at 75. And then we're gonna blend these together to make it more organic and natural looking. So I'm just gonna select these and grab them and move them a little bit to the left to give us some space. Then we're gonna blend these together with a noise texture. So let's shift A, search for a noise texture here, like this. Take our vector and move it into the vector of the noise texture. And then we can preview it like so. And then I'm gonna hit shift A and search for a map range node. And then put that on this node here. And then on this noise texture, we're going to switch the scale to a 10. And then the detail to an 8, like that. Then we're going to up the contrast between these two a little bit, because this is going to be the factor that we're mixing the Voronoi's together. So we're going to take this from minimum here and move it to a 0.25. Actually a 0.35, I think, to bring out the black a little more. There we go. Then this from maximum, we'll move to a 0.65, like so, to bring out the white, so we have a lot more contrast going on. Then we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a mix RGB node, like this. Then we're gonna take the result of the first math node and move it into color one, the result of the second into color two, like so. Then we'll take the result of the map range and move it into the factor. Then if we control shift left click to preview, we can see that we are blending the bigs and the smalls together quite nicely. Awesome. Then we can go ahead and check clamp here to make sure we're only getting values from zero to one coming out of this guy. Then to mix it into our bump node, we're gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna search for the bump node here. And then we're gonna plug this color into our height. And if we control Shift and left click to preview this guy, we can see that it's way, way too bumpy. So we're gonna switch the strength all the way down to a 0 0.025. And then we're actually going to do something additional to lower the values out of this. We're gonna hit Shift A and search for another map range node here. And then we're going to switch this to maximum value here to a 0 0.015 so that we make the bump even more subtle. So this, if we preview this guy, we can see that all of the values are from pure black to a 0 0.015. And then in the height, it is just making it very subtle. Then we'll take the normal and move it into the normal of the shader. And if we preview the shader right now, we can see that it's looking like this. So we still need to add in our roughness and our metallic and color. So first we'll add in the surface imperfections. Obviously we're gonna have a setting where you can easily turn the surface imperfections off if you want it to be purely uh, curly. But yeah, the imperfections are nice to have at some point if you were to need them. So because we've already done this, I'm gonna grab it and move it down here so we can work up here now. 
So the surface imperfections are gonna be made out of the noise texture. So we'll hit Shift A, search bar, noise texture like this. Take the vector of the mapping and move it into the vector of this noise texture. And then we can preview it with Control Shift and left click. Then the detail on this, we're gonna move up to a point, I mean to a 10, not a point 10. And then the roughness to a 0.75, just so that it gets a little bit more blurring in here. And then the distortion, we'll move it to 0.5. So we get some swirls going on, but we can't see much contrast here. So we're going to press Shift A and search for a map range node, like this. Then we're going to take this from minimum value right here, and move it into a 0.4. And then move this from maximum to a 0.35. And what this is going to do, is it gives us some nice imperfections here. I'm going to go out of camera view, and scroll in. So we can see the little swirls going on for our imperfections. But obviously this is a bit too much, because we want the minimum roughness coming out of this guy to be a 0.4 and the maximum roughness coming out of this guy to be a 0.8. So we don't get anything purely rough, but we also don't get anything super smooth. And so to control these values, to be able to scale the imperfections uh, manually, we're gonna hit Shift A and we'll search for a math node here. And then we're going to duplicate this math node, hit with Shift D. And this is gonna contr control our uh, from minimum and from maximum values. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the values on both of these and move them both to zero, like this. Then we're simply going to take this bottom value on the top one and move it to a 0.4. And then plug it into the from minimum. And then the bottom value on this math node to a 0.35. To plug it into this right here. And then to control these with one control, we're going to hit Shift A and search for a value node here. And then take the result of this value into the zeros on here. So now if we up this to like a 0.05, we can see that we, the server infections get bigger, and obviously if we move it to a zero, they get to their default. If we move it to a negative one, they stop existing entirely. Awesome. So that is there, so we can control the service infections manually from here. And also we can control the scale of them here if we want them to be smaller. We can always up the scale here to like 50, and then they get super tiny. But yeah, that's the cool control that we have now. So now we just have to mix this in with our face roughness. So we'll hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB here. Then I'm going to take this result, and it's going to plug in to our color one, like this. And if we can Shift Shift and left click here, we can see this is going on right now. If we switch this to a pure black, we can see that it's blending these in a way we don't exactly want. So we're going to take this and put it into color two instead. And then for this color one, I'm going to hit Shift A, search for a value node, and this is going to be the default roughness of our pearl and i'll make it a zero for now i'll leave it a zero we're going to switch it to something in a moment but if we are preview previewing this mixed up with control shift and left click if we switch this to a zero we can see that we get pure black if we switch it to one the surface imperfections are um, uh, affecting it so this can take away the surface imperfections entirely or just have them be very subtle and so for our default roughness we're going to make this a 0.4 so when we take the surface imperfections all the way away and move it to a zero we have this. Obviously, we can also take them away here, but sometimes we'll want to have the surface imperfections, but then we'll want to adjust it to where they're not taking too much effect, to where they're a little blurrier. And so now we just have two controls for that. So anyways, hopefully that made sense. And then we'll also want to check clamp on this just in case. Then we're going to take the result of this color and plug it into the roughness, like so. Now if we preview the shader here, we are almost done. I'll go to camera view. All we have to do is add the color and make it metallic. So we'll start with the metallic. We'll up that to a one. As you can see, the surface imperfections start taking into account here. Obviously, if you think they're strong, you can do whatever you want with this factor here. Then the base color is really simple. I'll give you a hex value for it. We're going to be using an E7C AC1. Again, that is an E7C AC1. And I'll type it in right now. Just like that. And we have our finished pearl procedural material with adjustable factors for the procedural imperfections. So I'm gonna leave it at zero for the thumbnail and the bonuses will just be the added imperfections that you can add if you feel like it. But yeah, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this material and um, uh, enjoyed the detail that we were able to add into the imperfections. And obviously we can take away the bump entirely if we move the strength to a zero, if you want it to be perfectly smooth. But really, most not anything is perfectly smooth. Obviously, pearls are not this rough. It's a 0.025 value, like we said earlier. But yeah, anyways, 
Hopefully you enjoyed this material and can use it in your pearl renders. And I'll see you guys in the next one.